Good afternoon. It is a good afternoon. I am here to bring you a tale of twos. Twos as in pairs. First, a tale of two sports for which Maple Club was initially known, cricket and netball. And netball produced in its first cohort, Marriott Griffith from down the hill, a tough goal shoot, and cricket in its second year, 1960, produced a spectacular wicketkeeper in Hartley Doyle, whom we come to later rest today. Two sports. A tale also of two injuries. You will think that nothing good comes from injury. Think again. Two injuries, one for better, one for worse. I'll talk about the worst one first. After five years of exhibiting his brilliance as a, a wicket keeper, first of all, and as a batsman, Hartley was finally given a Barbados cap at the age of 30. But just before that match started, he got injured. And not wanting to lose his pick, he played injured. And it was a bad outcome. He was never picked again. On the other hand, four years earlier, David Allen was warned that if he had played injured for, West, uh, for ill for West Indies and done badly, he would never have been picked again. It didn't matter. In either case, David, uh, David Allen played, did not play. David Murray took his place, and he set records. That was one injury. The second injury, which was the first that Hartley had, took place in 1962 in, in Grenada on a tour when the Martin wicket kicked up and Hartley got his face very badly injured, severely injured. And one young lady volunteered to be his nurse and later she became his wife. So that was a good outcome. Bad outcome would come later. The third tale is a tale of two families joined at the hip, as it were, via sports. Forever friends and more like family since 1960. And the third is a tale of two daughters, Hartley, Junior, Nikki, and Marcel, the firstborn Maple Club children. And these two must have been the Guinness World Record holders for the youngest players in the world to have a bar tab. By age three, they had an account with the Maple Bar, and they entertained their friends to the chagrin of their parents. We had to make sure that the barman Warren Skinner knew what not to serve them. Two daughters, too young to produce, too young to pronounce the word hockey, and they won't tell you how they called it. Long before all of the above, Two schoolmates, very, very long before, a tale of two young 1940s born teens sitting in successive classrooms at St. Michael's Girls School. One girl telling jokes or playing pranks just before the teacher walked into the room, and all the rest of the class in stitches, some laughing until they cried. One girl having a straight, straight face. And the rest of the class, of course, either detained, put on the bench, or some other punishment. That one girl who had the straight face was the one who told the jokes, the one who played the pranks. Her name was Marriott Miranda. Miranda, finally, the other Miranda, Miranda number two, Randy finally came to work at the Tourism Authority as an intern out of college. And I had the pleasure 
of realizing that this second generation Doyle was going to be a titan in tourism. And she has not let me down. To this day, she is still doing her thing. In fact, both children have been achievers. And I thank and laud their parents, the late parents now, Marriott and Hartley, for training them. As brave and indomitable Marriott continues to rest in peace, so may Hartley join her, and may, and may they both continue in the eternal rest of God. Now, Sign Nurse, uh, perhaps the most ardent supporter of Maple Club, will pay a tribute on behalf of that club. everyone. I'm here in this capacity this afternoon as a link the old maple with the new maple because many of the younger present players uh, they, they, they didn't know Harley personally but they would have heard of him. Before I give this little tribute I'd like to say that my cousin Grady Nesfield has asked me to extend his deepest condolences to the family of Hartley. He, at the moment, he's in Bermuda. I first met Hartley in, 19, in the late 1960s when I journeyed to Maple with my cousin Graydon, who was representing Maple Club in cricket, along with Hartley and a number of loyal members, too numerous to mention. As an ardent supporter of Maple, I became friendly with just about every cricketer in the club and many of the other members who represented in other sports. I am humble and consider myself very fortunate to have been able to be fostered over time a lasting friendship with such a good man, even up to his passing. The first thing that struck me on meeting Hartley for the first time was his deportment. I was a young teenage guy at that time, and I was always fascinated by his neatness, cleanliness. I've never seen him dirty, which would not be something expected of a wicket keeper who rolls around on the ground. Without a shadow of doubt, Hartley Doyle was one of the world's best dressed men of his era in cricket. A serious and competent cricketer, a fantastic way keeper, and a sticker for punctuality. Hartley represented Maple Club with pride and distinction. He went on to represent Barbados in the intercolonial cricket competition against what was then British Guyana, rubbing shoulders with greats like Sir Gary Sobers and then captain Sir Everton Weeks. It is believed that he got his stylish and classy walk from the great Sir Gary but he would say that Sigari was the one who stole it from him. A loyal club member, Hartley showed interest particularly in the young cricketers and would spend time talking to them and offering tips that would help them to improve their skills. Hartley always had the ability to play cricket, but the jury is still out on how he was also able to become a competent hockey player. Rumor has it that he either met the late Marriott Griffith and followed her to Maple, or he decided to take up hockey in order to get closer to her as she played hockey and netball for the club. Whichever way he did it, he succeeded as their relationship subsequently blossomed into marriage. The club in early years was fortunate to have Hartley as a member who was always willing to support any efforts. At a time when many unable to cover the cost of playing gear, Hartley was employed at the Pung Hill Dairy and through his influence was able to convince his management team to sponsor, hockey, sponsor the hockey teams. Pung Hill Maple became a household name until things changed and different sponsors came into the picture to benefit from the team's successes. 
after he decided to retire from the sport, Hartley did not desert the club, but like a real stalwart, became a full-time member of the balcony crew. Joining others like Bentley Lane, Robinson, Nesville, Steve, Jeff Bovell, Honda, the late Ozzy Marshall, Sam Harris, Puff Drayton, and the many supporters and ex-players who would come out every playing day to keep the balcony alive. If you knew Hartley Dole, you knew a man of a personality and demeanor that exemplified common decency and integrity, a man for others, in particular the youth, to emulate. A great man, a committed member and stalwart of Maple Club, one of the few of his era who has left us, was completed his journey on earth, and will now leave us to join the other stalwarts of the passing parade. Stalwarts like Wayne Sam Harris, Oswald Marshall, Wayne Gibbons, Barrington Yearwood, Chapman Burnham, and Mervyn White, and the others too many to mention who bear the names that are synonymous with Maple Club. On behalf of the members of the council, the members and friends of Maple Club, and on the behalf of myself and my family, I extend deepest condolences to the family and friends of this good man. Yes, he was a good man. May he rest in peace and rise in glory.
resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Come back, just keep going. Yeah. Turn when we are coming up. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. With faith, with faith in, in Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother, Hillard Hartley, for burial. Our brother was in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us, therefore, with confidence, pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. Let us pray. O God of grace and of glory, we remember before you this day our brother Hillard. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and the friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. Please be seated. Thanksgiving for our brother Hartley will continue with the eulogy which is being read by Richard Matthews. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Hillard Hartley Doyle was born on the 15th of November, 1935. He was the son of Germain Doyle and Ernest Seeley, deceased. Husband of the late Marriott Doyle, who predeceased him in 2009. They were married in this church on the 17th of April, 1965. 
This marriage resulted in the birth of two lovely daughters, Hartley, also known as Nikki, and Miranda. He was the grandfather of Coyote Springer, Edon Springer, Aaron Doyle, and Mackenzie Doyle. Hartley was one of 11 children and was one of a twin. His twin sister, Sinclair, predeceased him some years ago. Hartley Doyle was a man that loved sports, especially cricket and hockey. In his later years, he tried his hand at darts, which he played socially with friends and family. Hartley loved cricket dearly and started his cricket career at Radcliffe Sports Club in the BCL and then played for Maple in the BCL competition. He also played hockey for Maple. After he retired from competitive cricket in the BCA, he played in the over 40s cricket competition, a competition that was organized for players over 40. Excuse me, and he played for Central Cricket Club. Hartley was an outstanding and top class wicket keeper and a more than competent batsman. He was good behind the wicket and that he was selected to represent Barbados in British Guyana in 1961. That Barbados team had in some of the best cricketers ever to represent Barbados and the West Indies. Players such as Everton Weeks, Richard Prof Edwards, Tony King, Charles Griffith, Cammy Smith, Rod Branca, Seymour Nurse, Conrad Hunt, just to name a few. The cream of Barbados and West Indies cricket. Hardly could have safely said that he played with some of the best who ever played cricket for the West Indies. I really got to know Hartley in 1977, when our families moved into South Bend Avenue, Pine Garden, St. Michael, as I only knew him from playing cricket against him. Our family moved in a short while before the doors, and their, as their house was being completed. When it was completed and they moved in, it was just two or three, uh, three, two or three days after that his wife saw my wife Loretta in our garden and shouted across, Loretta, is that you? And my wife overheard and answered. When the person got closer, Loretta said, Maria, and they embraced each other as they went to St. Michael's Girls School together, and they had not seen each other since school. Hartley and I then joined them and that was be the beginning of a great friendship, one I will never forget. I would like to mention here at this time that South Bend Avenue is one of the best residential areas you could ever want to reside in. When we moved in the avenue, the families there welcomed us with open arms and form and fond greetings. Families such as the Reeds, the Brathwaites, there are three lovely elderly sisters called the Empty Sisters. The general, they were family to the general traders group. And then there are those who came after, like Miss Sybil Chandler, the Crony family, and the Pandor family. All the families lived well together in South Bend. Hartley spent most of his working life at the Pine Hill Dairy, where he worked for over 30 years before he retired, reaching the position as purchasing manager. Hartley was a very quiet person and a real gentleman, a really devout family man who loved his wife, Maria, their two daughters, and their four grandchildren dearly. He was not a person who liked a lot of fetting. fetting. He, was, he preferred house parties, which he had a lot of within the circle of friends and family. Hartley was a very fit person who loved to walk a lot. And he would walk those grandchildren to school on mornings and walk back for them on afternoons. He was a person who kept himself busy as he would do the cooking on some occasions for the family. He could really cook good, especially cocoa red herring. <laughs> He was also a tailor, 
A lot of you all may not know that. But Hartley made his own pants and washed and ironed his own clothes. He just liked to be on the move. Hartley was a very meticulous dresser. He loved to dress. <clears throat> and he never, you would never see Hartley wear a pair of black shoes with a brown pants or vice versa. Or wear a black belt with a brown pants. He was always so well attired. He was a man of his words. And when Hartley said, when Hartley gave you his word, that was it. Hartley will never go back on his word. When he tells you he's doing something for you or he's doing something, that was it. Hartley, my friend, my brother, my pal, your life was a blessing. Your memory is a keepsake I will always treasure. Nikki, Miranda, Coyote, Edon, Aaron, Mackenzie, and other members of the Doyle family, I know that words cannot express the profound sadness you all feel at this time. But let us give God thanks for his life. And let us, sorry, let us give God thanks for his life. And, and though he will, we will miss him, we lay him to rest in the hope that he, we will be reunited again. So my friends, to be with Hartley again, we can only do that by going to where Hartley will be. And that is with our Lord Jesus Christ. For Hartley is not coming back to us. We will never see Hartley here again. We have to go to where he will be. So let us prepare ourselves for that heavenly journey by making our peace with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Farewell, Hartley, for God said, come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Go and rest, my friend. Hasta la vista till we meet again. Rest in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to read this tribute on behalf of Hartley's two daughters, Hartley, also known as Nikki, and Miranda. He was the best that a father could ever be. Daddy was a hard worker, and one of the biggest lessons he taught us was the value of really working hard. He woke up every day, put on his shoes, and went to work to provide for his family, even if he didn't feel good he would get up and go to work. Of course, after a little baby and from our mother. He truly believed that if you worked hard, treated people right, and you were hardworking, strong, that you, God will look after you. He was deeply devoted to our mother. However, he was no saint by any means or stretch of the imagination. He was a doting grandfather as well and his four grandchildren always looked forward to his stories, where he would reminisce about his youth and his days of playing cricket and hockey. Dad was also inspirational to us. With his passion for music, he loved most types, but his favorite was My Way by Frank Sinatra. And he sang this song daily, and even when he was in hospital, his grandchildren would play this song, and he would nod his head at the time. And now, the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear, I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled each and every highway, and more, much more than this, I did it my way. Although our dad, our dad may never have said it out loud, we know how truly proud he was of us and the grandchildren. <clears throat> and the way we have all grown up. He shared strength and love right up until his last days with us. For us to lose our father, and Coyote, Edon, Aaron, and Mackenzie to lose their grandfather is one of the most difficult things that we have gone through. We realize how fortunate we were to have him from, for such a long time as a father and a grandfather. There are no words to express his influence in our life. 
It is through his example that we have learned how to be good parents and role models to our children. Those memories and experiences with him will never fade. On behalf of the family, we, Nikki and Miranda, would like to thank the National Assistance Board for providing the two caregivers, Ms. Gibson and Ms. Williams, who cared for him during the day for the past year. They were instrumental in allowing us to maintain a regular life. In closing, Dad, your love, your patience, your understanding, your wisdom, and your amaz amazing sense of humor will live on inside us forever. You have given us gifts that are more precious than anything in this world. Goodbye, Dad. You will always live in our hearts, and we will love you eternally. Rest in peace. Thank you. him through all the changing scenes of life. Let us pray. 
O God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant Hartley, and grant him an entrance into the land of light and joy, in the fellowship of your saints, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated for the first scripture reading, being read by Michelle Skeet. Reading from the Word of God, written in the Book of Wisdom, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and 9. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be an affliction, and their going from us to be their destruction but they are at peace. For though in the sight of men they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Those who trust in him will understand truth and the faithful will abide with him in love because grace and mercy are upon his elect, and he watches over his holy ones. The word of the Lord. The Psalm 23, and we use the Crimean version of this psalm.
now have, we'll now have the second, second scripture. scripture reading being read by Harrietta Graves. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. But we would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who had fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The word of the Lord. The hymn, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder.
let us pray. O Lord, uphold me that I may uplift you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. I had intended this evening to reflect on the words of Psalm 23, the psalm which was appointed for this service. But given the turn of events, I thought it might be better to reflect on the words of another psalm, words from Psalm 46. And this was also the case for us this morning when we had our in the week service where we should have been looking maybe at St. Albans, who, whose feast day is today. Rather, we looked at Psalm 26, Psalm 46, sorry, and some words from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, which are headed, Jesus calms the storm. And we prayed about the entire situation which we are facing at this time. So, Psalm 46 says to us, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He is our refuge. And on a day like today, the word refuge means a lot to us in this region. Because when we think refuge, we think of a place that is secure, a place that is safe a place in which, to which you can resort to ride out the storm. And so for us, we prepare to ride out Storm Brent, or hope that he passes and goes north and keeps on going and not cause us any more grief than he has caused already. And in the thing about God being our refuge and strength, it says he's a very present help in a time of trouble. But then later in the psalm, in verse 8, it says, the Lord of hosts is with us. God remains with us through all of our ordeals, through all of our difficulties. God is with us. And in the story from St. Mark's Gospel, one of the things noted, and I'm going to assume that you are familiar with that story, one of the things that is pointed out to us early on is that Jesus was in the boat sleeping on a cushion. He was already in the boat even before they started out on their journey. The Lord of hosts is with us. And that says to us that we have to keep Jesus in our boats. We have to keep Jesus, we have to keep God in our lives. We have to have him present. Now, the only way when the rough days come, when the storms of life come, and one of the ads that run sometimes would tell us that we need to know where our shelters are. In this season, we use the phrase, we need to be prepared. We need to, to get ready before the event. And it's the same with having a Jesus in our lives, that we can't wait until, or we shouldn't rather, wait until the issues and the problems come, then to know that there is a God. But we have to be able to recognize that the Lord of hosts is the creator of this earth. He is the giver of life, the sustainer of life. And he wants and desires us to walk with him day by day and not wait until problems come. Because then you don't have that refuge, because if you don't know where it is, it is going to be all that much more difficult to find it in a time of trouble. It's like knowing where your, your lanterns and your batteries are. And if you wait till the, the lights go out and it is nighttime, 
you might hit your foot a few times on the sofa and on the kitchen counter and on this and on that before you can push your hand in the drawer and hopefully you only got batteries in there, you ain't got no sharp edged tools or anything else in there that might cut you as you search for them. And so we need to be prepared, we need to be able to have God within our lives for the storms that come in our lives. And of course, I not only speak to the, to the breaths of this world, but to all of the other things that can come and disturb our peace from time to time. And there are many and varied, and I'm not going to go into them this afternoon for obvious reasons. But death is one of those storms that come into our lives. And death, whenever it comes, upsets and disturbs our lives. Whenever it comes. No matter how elderly or how senior a person is or how small they are, how young they are, whether they have been battling illness for 10 years, whether they only got up and said, I don't feel well, or whether they didn't get up at all. Whenever death comes, it disturbs our lives. And we need to be able to have the comfort of God in our lives, to accept that, yes, our brother has done it his way, he's done it my way, and as the eulogist says, death separates. Death causes us to separate from all that we know and have grown to love in this life. Death takes with it those whom we love. But as indicated, there is that possibility of meeting again on the other side of the divide. But if we want that meeting, if we are desirous of that meeting, then it is sorted out and planned in this life. And again, I go and I say that in this life, we need to keep Jesus in our boats. We need to keep Jesus in our boats through this life so that when days like these come, we can have a place to which we can resort. We can have a place to which we can resort that can provide that measure of comfort for us, that can help us through these days. And of course, to help us through these days, we have to also depend and share with each other. We have to be able to rely on each other to help us through days and times like these. We miss our loved ones, but we have their memories to help to buoy us and to see us through. I think I've been hearing whispers of him being a cricketer and I'm seeing cricket bats and everything else. I don't know what his statistics are, but you know and you would know how great a cricketer he was, whether that was actual or a mind thing. I don't know. But those memories, those times, will help to see you through. Remembering him for his darts, remembering him for his ability to cook, will help to see you through as you share those memories with each other. And certainly as we come together today on a day like this, you will remember his parting, his, 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 his going, his final um, journey, as it were. Because on a day like today, it will stick in our memories. And so we give God thanks for him, for all that he has been able to do and achieve in his life, for his children, and his grandchildren and others, and for the legacy which he leaves, and trust that we are able to live up and live out his legacy as well. And as we live out and live up our days, as we face the 
face life, face the storms of the day, to remember, and I will say it this way, to keep Jesus in your boat. Amen. Please stand. And on page seven of the service booklet, we find the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us now with confidence confess the faith into which we were baptized. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life sting. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for all who mourn this afternoon, the family members of our departed brother, his friends and colleagues, neighbors throughout and over his time as we remember and thank God for the life of our brother Hartley. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, may we be strengthened in our faith, live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son, and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, show your mercy to the dying, strengthen them with hope, and to fill them with the peace and the joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, we commend all people to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled, and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. The hymn number 223, Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord my God. And during this hymn, an offering is taken and is used for the upkeep of the cemetery, to assist with the upkeep of the cemeteries.
Now have the prayers of commendation as we commend our brother to God's eternal care and keeping. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be God, our Father, the creator and preserver of all life, Blessed be Jesus Christ, the Savior and Redeemer of mankind. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the enabler and sustainer of those who seek for grace. Let us commend our brother Hillard Hartley to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your mighty power, you have given us new life in Christ Jesus. We entrust Hartley to your merciful keeping in the faith of the Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to glory forever. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Given the nature of the day, we will do the service of committal here within the church. And so we sing the hymn, There is Joy, There Was Joy in Heaven, page 11.
Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayers, forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. Ensure and a certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our brother Hillard Hartley, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved Son shall come again in judgment, both this, our brother Hartley, and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and the courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Amen. As we process to the graveside, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. 